Corinthians chapter number 13, verse 1, out of the New Revised Standard Version says, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body to that, so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Father, I ask you again to join us in this conversation, steer the conversation. Lord, let it be an exchange of your divine intellect and wisdom into our fragile clay pot, our finite minds, fragile hearts. Help us not to lean to our own understanding. We lean to you now. Now God, wipe now the chalkboard of our lives clean so that whatever we thought we knew, you have room to give us new information. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk today from the subject, the miseducation of love. Turn to your neighbor and say, the miseducation of love. The miseducation of love. love. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to tell me some things things that I thought I knew. But I am open. I am open. Anybody open today? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, if you approach this lesson today with an opinionated perspective based on your own resolutions and your experiences, you're going to miss entirely what God's trying to say. The amazing thing about God is that sometimes you can get to a point where you think you know, and he will totally revolutionize, radically change your thought process. The problem in church is there's too many of us sit in church like we know everything. But sound wisdom is laid up for the righteous. And I don't care how much you've studied or are studied. You never know all that is about God. (sighs) I'm going to prove this to you. (laughs) And preachers, please, this is for you. Everybody else can eavesdrop. When you are studying a text, please understand that there are so many more ways to look at it than how you think. The woman has an issue of blood, and so we love to talk about the fact that she, you know, she she touched the hem of his garment. But you ever start to talk, but have you ever started to think about who she had to leave out and who she had to be disconnected from and what was going on in her life for twelve years? She spent all her money. How did she make her money? She had a family. Who was a family? Where were they in this process? Uh, (laughs) Have you ever started to think about what it was like for this woman who was hemorrhaging to press through a crowd on her hands and knees in the dusty streets to get to Jesus? Have you ever started to think, have you ever took the time to look at it from another angle? Oh, Jarius got a daughter that's 12 years old. 12 years he's been enjoying relationship with his daughter, and by 12, they're planning for her future because in another year or so, she could be somebody's wife. So they're preparing a dowry and all that other stuff, and she dies. I know we want to talk about the miracle, but have you ever thought to think about the madness that preceded the miracle? I'm just throwing this out there. It's it's off the top of my head. I was just thinking. Oftentimes we sit in church and we miss a whole lot of what God wants to say thinking we already heard it. So don't sit here today, brothers and sisters, grading the preacher. Don't. Against your own knowledge. Open your heart. Let God talk to you. Because most of us think we know what love is. But most of us 
Because love is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. But unfortunately, there are a whole lot of us who have been jacked up because we made it a feeling. We marry people based on how they make us feel. We say stuff like, love don't hurt. That's a lie. <laughs> love has to hurt. And sometimes, sometimes love hurts to keep you from harm. Okay, that, let, let me walk a little slow here. I said love hurts sometimes to prevent you from harm. Come on, parents, you know what I'm talking about. You had to wear that behind out. And the reason why you had to wear that behind out or your motivation was while it was hurting, the spanking hurt. Anybody got a whipping? Spank, a beating? I don't know what y'all called it. A beating? Anybody in here? Okay. And then your parents say something crazy like, I'm, be I'm beating you like my daddy. I'm beating you so the cops won't beat you. Well, in his mind, while he knew he was hurting me or he knew it would hurt and it did hurt, it kept me from harm. Love is not an emotion, so it's not about rubbing me and, and, and kissing and hugging. If you really love me, sometimes you look me in my face and tell me I'm wrong. Most of us have a miseducation about love. All human beings have the basic common need. We all need love. I don't care how independent you are. I don't care how hard you are and all that other stuff. Now, some, you know, some of us ain't lovable. You know, we done, because of whatever, we have put up walls and everything else, and sometimes our personality is not very lovable. But underneath all of that, you need love. I've had the privilege of counseling and ministering to young men who have been involved in gang life and been incarcerated. And what's always interesting is that the whole gang life is about a need to belong and a need to be loved. And if you watch those documentaries about the Bloods and the Crips and how they started and all that stuff, you discover that they genuinely love each other. And the, or in their minds they do. The whole thing is that you in the family and we're going to look out for you. And people gravitate, young men, young ladies, gravitate toward that because of a need that all of us have. And that is to be loved. The problem is because we don't understand it's a need, we reduce it to just being a want. So we live our lives looking for people to fulfill our wants. I want to be loved. Help me, Eric Benet. Everything is about what you're going to do, what have you done for me? Love me in a special way. What more can I say? Love me now. Every day, love me in your own special way. Some of y'all too young. Here's my point for you deep people. I'm, I'm going to preach to you all where you live. You did not get out of your bed, come out of the church to hear me be religious. And for all of you that did, you probably need to go somewhere else because that's not where we live. And I'm going to prove it to you in the scriptures. See, see let, let, let me break into this and tell you, most of us who think we're so super saved and everything, we couldn't handle Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible is not the Jesus that you could handle because Jesus was radical. Jesus did not act like us church folk. He was so in touch with the world. See, l let me help you with this. When you read the scriptures, when you read parables, Jesus wasn't being deep, using a whole lot of religious jargon. Jesus was using everyday language and everyday things that people could already relate to because they were involved in. So all of y'all that are trying to sit up here and bind me, I'm going to bind you back. Because I feel it, and I'm going to break it so somebody can get free. Because we couldn't handle the Jesus, because the Jesus I read in the scriptures hung out with holes and hookers. 
Jesus didn't like church folk. Because every time he went to church, every time he went to church, he had to deal with something. He had to deal with our craziness in church. I'll prove it to you. Your Bible says that when he went to church, they were so busy networking and marketing and doing PR stuff until he went in there kicking over tables and carrying on. He said, this is not the purpose of this. I didn't make there's people that need to come into an environment of prayer. And I'm not talking about hollering and spitting in the mic. I ain't talking about running and clapping. I'm talking about a prayerful environment. He says, if this is going to be my place, it's got to be a place where people who are messed up and jacked up come in here and feel my presence. But you've made it something else because you don't love me. He goes to church another time. I'm on a rant now, Lord. He goes to church another time. Every time he went to church, that was a problem. He goes to church, Deborah, and there's a man there with a withered hand. And the problem is the man was a member of the church. Jesus was visiting. And he had a problem because he figured, he said, now how does this guy come into church every Sunday with a withered hand and nobody has addressed it? You shouting over him, you spitting on him. You speaking in tongues, the, the, the spirit get high, we get to grabbing each other and shouting and carrying on, we get all that stuff, and this man got a withered hand, and you mean to tell me nobody has ever addressed it? Why am I the first one to address this? Jesus goes to church another time, and the Pharisee is up leading the worship. I want to thank God because I've been saved all day and I'm glad. I want to thank God, saints, because, whoo, feel all right under no condemnation. Glory to God, I, I'm qualified to stand here because, whoo, you can't spot my life. Jesus looked up in the back of the church and there was a man there and said, have mercy on me. I ain't come here for all of that. I've been jacked up. I got some stuff on my resume. I got some stuff on my record. It ain't cool at all. Jesus said, Bump that joker in the front. There was something about that guy in the back that got my attention. We couldn't handle Jesus. He, he goes to hookers' houses. Okay, let me, let me get back to this. The Bible is a book of relationships, and, and you're going to need to know this as we walk through this study. The Bible is a book of relationships, and it teaches you one of three things, how to, love your, how to love God, how to love yourself, and how to love each other. Any, any scripture in the Bible, I can prove to you, I can put my finger on it and prove to you that it's, it's somewhere within the confines of a relationship. In one scripture, we see all three of them. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, all thy heart, all thy might, right? Then thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's impossible for you to have healthy relationships when you don't know, don't know how to love yourself. And if you don't know God, if you cannot love God, then you will never know how to love you. Which means that you will always be the dysfunctional one in any relationship you come to. And you can speak in tongues and holler and work hard in church and all that other stuff. But until you come to a place where you really love God and not just church but love God, and then love yourself. There is more self-hate in the world than anything else. We have not been taught how to love ourselves because to love ourselves, we've been made to think is being conceited. Oh, boy. But you really don't know how to love anybody else until you learn how to take care of yourself. Listen what the scripture says. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as you do yourself. If you don't take care of you, you will never take care. Ladies, here I come. Never mind. I ain't going to talk I'm not going to. There are certain things. I'll deal with this enough time. But there are certain things. I'll deal with it in depth. There are certain things that you must look for in picking a mate. Choosing a mate. And one of the first things you need to do is check how they take care of themselves. Because anybody that walks around like a ragamuffin and does not keep themselves together does not care about themselves. I'm not just talking about appearance, but doesn't care about themselves and always need attention and always need validation for somebody else will never be good for you. 
Because when you don't give them the, the attention that they need, they'll go to somebody else. Okay, that... Her hair all over her head. Your kid's going to look like that. Doesn't take care of herself. She's not going to take care of what you all sire. If you lie to yourself, you'll lie to everybody else. Love that neighbor. I'm all right. You're just as crazy as crazy can be. Everybody know you're crazy. And you keep telling yourself that lie. Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. You, you got you know, you to get to the place where you understand, you know what, I'm, I'm really not together. I got some things I need to work on. Ain't nothing worse than trying to, you know, and I stopped trying. I, I, ain't having, I ain't having no talks with nobody that can't admit they wrong. I'm not, I'm not going to try to convince you of what everybody else know. When you just vehemently deny it. Is this all right yet? There are many wrong ideas about love that has uh, obscured our view and cause us to have unhealthy relationships. Most folk equate love with emotion. But again, love is not emotion. The other thing is love is not sex. Come Tuesday, I'll really deal with all that. I'm not going to deal with it, all that this morning. But, but let me just hit this. Love, you've got to be careful. Love is not controlling. Anybody who seeks to control you does not love you. Now, y'all ain't going to say man, so just, and I'm good. I'm loaded. I don't need it. I'm good today. But there is so much manipulation that we call love. That's what you're supposed to do. Who told you that? And in our culture, we have it bad. And our women have been abused and oppressed verbally, emotionally, psychologically, and even then. And when you don't do all that, then physically. In the name of love. Because there's a miseducation. She's not your slave, man. Ladies, y'all would be saying something. I mean, my God, really? I'm trying to help y'all. She's not your slave. And you can't throw that thing on it. You my wife. I go out here and I provide for you. That don't make her your slave. I didn't marry Andrina for her to be my slave. Jesus Christ, uh, Paul said this. He says, Paul says, it was Paul. He said, husbands, love your wives as, as Christ loved the church and gave himself. He tells the wives, submit yourself. Holler now. He said, submit yourself unto your husband. But here's the point. Give her a reason, a good reason, to submit. The reason why I submit to God is because he makes it easy. He, he, he gave himself for me. Yo. And so because he keeps giving himself for me, when he tells me to do something, there's something in me that wants to do it. I wish I could talk. He ain't got to be talking. He ain't got to stand over me and say, if I'm God, pray, I'm God. Love me, I'm God. Praise me, I'm God. You better do. After all, I do. he ain't got to throw it up in my face. God don't even throw in my face what he's done for me. If you got to throw in somebody's face what you've done for them, to get them to respond to you, they don't love you. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm caught between two worlds, but I don't want no chick in my life I got to control. I don't want that. That don't do nothing for my ego. That's stupid. I want you to want to. Yo. And maybe I'm different. Y'all have to pray for me, but, but if you don't want to, good. 
You ain't got to cook. You ain't got to clean. I can buy that if I want to. I don't marry. You don't marry no woman to get no maid. Get your lazy self up and cook yourself. Get your lazy up. Clean your own drawers up. Don't, don't start with me today, y'all. Pick your own shoes up. That ain't why you get no that ain't why you get no wife. Cause you want to get it on a regular? Go buy it. That ain't why you get married. If you got that much of a problem, go buy it. Yeah, I said it. I meant it too. Well, we don't we don't have right we don't have good relationships. That's why there's so much divorce and unhealthiness in the church and so many unhappy people in the church singing and shouting and miserable. Because there's been a miseducation of love. You need somebody's gonna love you when the sun ain't shining. Y'all quiet. You need somebody that's going to love you when you when your breath stink, your hair all over your head. You need somebody that's going to love you when you got a job and when you got a pink slip. Y'all ain't ready for this today. You, you need somebody that's going to love you when everybody's celebrating you. And you need somebody. Y'all better help me praise God for Lady Andrina over here. Because you need somebody when the whole city is talking junk about you. But she is standing there saying, baby, we got this. We're going to get through this. At no time in 26 years have I ever felt like she wasn't for me. I'm trying to help my sons. When you got a woman that's going to be there for you, ride or die, get your fool self together. Get yourself straight. Come home. Do us, y'all. Take care of your business. But you ain't going to find, everybody ain't going to put up with your craziness. When you find, men, let me help you something. When you find out, when you find somebody that's going to put up with your mood swings and your nutty ways, stick and stay. Because that's not just pretty faces, that's, that's love. When you find somebody that knows, let me tell you something, when somebody knows all your dirt, and knows all the craziness about you and decides to make a decision to stay, that's a blessing. I need you to give somebody a high five and say, I'm a, tell, tell your neighbor, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing.